Welcome back to Honest News. I've been warning folks that the mark of the beast is coming like a freight train. And uh, how many know that the United States of America is being bought up? The whole country is being bought up, being sold out. And things are being set up for a cashless society. And it's all happening very quickly. They asked Powell, the head of the Fed, they asked him if they were going to replace the dollar with a digital currency. And because it got leaked out, he tried to walk it back. But we're moving very quickly towards the mark of the beast. And uh, think about it this way. What if, for instance, what if BlackRock owned everything on the earth? because they own quite a bit now. But what if they owned everything? And what if the Antichrist had control over that entity or that conglomerate, whatever you want to call it, that empire? Do you see how this can happen? Vanguard and BlackRock basically own everything, one way or another. All corporations, everything is being bought up. All real estate is being bought up. Investors are buying up everything. And so we're seeing the stage being set for the Antichrist, that wicked, the man of sin. And it's coming quickly. Anybody listening? It's coming quickly. On a different note, we thank God that there are still a few souls that are interested in something other than this world. Had the great privilege today picking up a package or receiving a package from FedEx. And the person that was dropping off the package did not seem like they were in a very happy mood. And so the Lord worked. And I was about to turn away from receiving the package and walk away, and the Holy Spirit dealt with me to ask this individual if he knew Jesus. He walked back towards me, and he said, well, I'm Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I says, but do you know anything about the mark of the beast? Have you, he kind of looked at me sideways. Then I said, well, you've heard of 666, haven't you? And he, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. So the Holy Spirit prompted me to tell him that he needs to get a King James Version Bible and read the book of John. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, I'm going to do that. And then he volunteered that next time he drops off a package, he said, I'm going to let you know how things are going. Now, I didn't ask him to do that. How many know there's people out there looking for someone to lead them? Huh? We're supposed to be leading folks to Jesus. People are lost. They're looking for something more than what this world has to offer. And deep in their hearts, they know there's something, there's got to be something more beyond this world. Sadly, Satan oftentimes fills that void 
fills that vacuum. But thank God there is a hope beyond this world. Amen. And we need to be sharing that hope with the hopeless. So we thank God for that wonderful privilege. Please keep him in your prayers. His name is Leon. God will move and help him to see the truth. Open his eyes. Ask God, open this young man's eyes that he might see. We're living in a time where the God of this world, not that it's any different, he's always blinded the minds, but more so, I think, in this hour, being the last hour, we're down to the wire, the last of the last days. Satan, the prince, the god of this world, the prince of darkness, is blinding the minds of those that don't believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. I'm going to be praying for this young man that God will open his eyes until, I, until we see the fruit of it, until we see repentance, until we see this individual be born again. And I will tell you this, he wasn't proud. He was very humble. And how many know the gospel is not to be preached to the proud or the arrogant? Jesus was not anointed to preach the gospel to the proud and the arrogant, but to the meek. And there are some out there. They're searching. They're looking. Folks, we need to be ready. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. I was talking to my brother on the phone today started out just talking about something carnal or physical something in this world just something natural and before it was all said and done talking to him about the mark of the beast he got very nervous towards the end as we were talking about these things but how many know we're in a time when we need to be sharing the truth with everyone Amen. You don't want any blood being on your hands, do you? Because you didn't warn. Because you didn't let them know. Revelation chapter 13, beginning with verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. It's coming. It's going to happen. There's nobody going to be exempt. It says he causeth all. You look this up, it means he's going to make them. He's going to make them to do this. And if they won't be made to do it, by a persuasion of gentleness in that sense, not because the Antichrist will be gentle, but in the sense it won't be harsh or violent. Eventually, the scripture says, these individuals that don't accept the mark of the beast will be beheaded. So without question, it will start out at first as a voluntary thing probably will be promoted as some club. Something that's popular. Something that's convenient. But eventually, it'll become something that folks are not going to want to get involved with. The foolish virgins, the scripture says, they will be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus. They're not going to be willing to receive that mark. But it's going to be dark days. It's going to be tribulation and even great tribulation during that time. 
Folks, this is the time to be getting ready. This is the time to be getting out of here. Yesterday, I was looking over at the clock, as I often do, and see 24 at the end of the, whether it be 8 o'clock, whether it be 12 o'clock, it's, many times it ends with 24. And I looked over at the clock, and it was 1224. Remember, I was telling you about how the Lord is going to not only baptize us with the Holy Ghost, but with fire. And we're in the time where that fire is so needed. And it would seem like a blowtorch. The fire. The Lord spoke to me, and he said, you're coming short. That's not what you want to hear. Amen. You don't want to hear that from the Lord. For all have sinned and fallen short or come short of the glory of God. And you want to hear the Lord say to you, you're coming short. That's fire, people. That will burn. His word is like a fire. He's purging. He's cleansing. Until he makes a full end. He's gathering. But everything else is going to be destroyed. Everything that he doesn't spare. So the Lord said that to me. You're coming short. Boy, the Lord will set things in order, won't he? He'll give you the proper perspective. Paul the Apostle said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't work it out, anybody else's salvation out. Don't worry about them as far as working out their salvation. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I looked up that word, short, to come up short. It means to be destitute. It means to be deficient. It means to be left behind. It means to fall short of the goal. That's not what I want my life to be. I don't want to be left behind. How about you? We'll be right back after this. We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I So everything is being put in place for the cashless society that's coming. And it's happening quickly. We don't want to allow the message of the mark of the beast to become commonplace or to become just something that we just nonchalant, we become desensitized, we want to be on alert, 
We want to be awake. We don't want to be rocked to sleep, folks. Jesus said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, he said, look up, your redemption draws near. Even though we see it coming, we can become desensitized. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know all about it. I've been hearing it. People are talking about it. And the more they talk about it and the more it becomes commonplace, the more folks are going to become desensitized. Mark it down. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. I don't think it's all that important to know what that number is or that name as far as trying to figure it out. The Bible says, he that hath wisdom, let him count the Listen to me. I think it's more important that we understand it's coming. To be ready. To believe the Bible. To believe the truth while others are going to sleep. Amen? That doesn't mean that we're not supposed to seek the Lord for understanding. As it says in verse 18, he that hath wisdom, let him count the number or have... Uh, count the number of the beast. But just to know that it's coming, just to believe that it's coming, you're further ahead than many. Most pastors today, most churches, are not even mentioning the mark of the beast. There's no mention. They don't even talk about it. There's no mention of the Antichrist. Very few real, true ministers. I'm not talking about the charismatics. They talk about things like this all the time, but they have no faith and it's not real. And that will desensitize you from the truth as well. Hearing the gospel being preached as though it's a fire off or though, as though it's a fairy tale, it's not real. Because it's not being shared in the spirit of truth and it's not a convicted message. It's not a message that brings conviction. So it causes folks to harden their hearts, to become desensitized to the truth. I mean, no familiarity breeds contempt. And the more familiar that people get with even the message of the mark of the beast, the more dangerous it becomes. We cannot allow, folks, our hearts to become calloused we can't allow to become ourselves to become lukewarm. We need to be alerted. We need to be awakened, aroused. Amen. Paul the Apostle said, after preaching the gospel, I myself could be a castaway. But he said, I'm going to keep under my body. Listen to me, people. Just because I'm preaching to you, just because I'm teaching the gospel does not mean, does not mean I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it if I only, only if I fight the good fight of faith and believe, continue to believe. Amen? I can't let doubt and unbelief get in. I got to keep on weeding the garden. Make sure no unbelief and doubt gets in. Especially when you start hearing charismatics and you start hearing all these others, these big mega churches talking about the Antichrist or talking about the mark of the beast and people listening to that and it's not in the spirit of truth and it's not convicted. It's not convicting them. It's, there's no conviction. You know, what that, you know what that is like? That's like... No different than watching a Hollywood movie. 
watching a movie like Left Behind or something like that, or a movie about the Antichrist. It's no different. But when a true anointed man of God, a minister of the gospel, shares the truth in the Spirit of God, there's a conviction. And that conviction will cause people to awaken. If they're lukewarm, they'll get on fire for God. If they're cold, they'll get on fire for God. In my opinion, there's nothing more dangerous than the gospel being preached without conviction. You remember what the scripture says about Lot? When he told his sons-in-law, or he told them about... Those that would be his sons-in-law, I guess, because I think it says his daughters were virgins. So I guess they were getting in the, they were in the process of being married. But when he told them what the angel had said, it said he, it seemed as though he mocked. They didn't take him serious. Why? Because there was no conviction. The condition of Saul or the condition of Lot was he had to be dragged out of the city that God was preparing to destroy. Can you imagine being in such a condition that you're actually fighting against God? You got to be dragged out of the city. Can you imagine that? And then his wife looked back. A city that God is getting ready to destroy and you're dragging your feet. You can't tell me that Lot believed. When he shared the message of the angels that came to warn, they didn't believe him. Amen? How many know we need to be pricked in our hearts in the south? We need to rend our hearts and not our garments, lest we're also left behind. God is no respecter of persons, folks. Even sharing with you every time we share with you. Listen to me. You that wait to hear a word from the Lord As we upload these messages, and that's all you have, you're on life support. If you're not taking the time to feed yourself spiritually, amen. Many of you quite possibly could be on life support right now. Simply because you're just living off of the message of the word that God gives Brother Joseph to share with you. It's not enough, people. The word we share with you should be confirmation to what the Lord, the Holy Spirit's showing you, revealing to you. You shouldn't be listening to these messages as the first time you're hearing the message for the week. When you hear the message of the gospel, when you hear what Brother Joseph is sharing from the Lord, you should say, Amen, because you agree, because you have heard the same thing. Because the Holy Spirit is revealing to you the same thing. And the message we share is simply a confirmation. And that's why we say, Amen. Amen, folks. Even the amen says amen. We need to say amen to what he says amen to. Amen. Praise God. This thing is coming like a freight train, people. All the world is being bought up right now by a handful of people. It comes down to it. The Bible says there's going to be only a few 
regions of the earth that are going to give their power to the beast for one hour. But the whole earth today is being swallowed up. It's all being swallowed up. This beast system. And we need to come out from among them and be separate. Lest we also learn their ways. Learn their traditions. Amen. Because we could be destroyed with them in the overthrow. Lot could have been destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah if it wasn't for God's mercy. Can you imagine God dragging Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah? He's kicking and screaming. He doesn't want to go. That's mercy. How many of us are dragging our feet right now? In some fashion. Something got a hold of you? Does some weight have a hold of you? This is the time to cast off the weights, folks. Run the race that's set before us. Lest we come short of reaching the goal. Amen? I want to cross the finish line. I don't want to wait. I want to go on the first trip out. The Lord will help me. I want to be one of those overcomers. No guarantee. But I'm believing God to help me. I don't want to be dragged, folks. But if there's something in me that's keeping me from running with him, not just walking with God, but l running after him until I can walk with him. Enoch walked with God. He was not for God took him. I wonder if there was ever a time when Enoch had to run after the Lord to catch up with him. Not that the Lord was running, but how many know if God is walking and we slow down or we get distracted, it may take us a while to catch up to him. Can you imagine having to run to catch up to the Lord that's walking? You li Listen, folks, you, you, you've been a long time away from him if you have to run to catch up to him. But Enoch walked with God. Draw me and we'll run after you. Shouldn't have to run after him. Not if we're walking with him. Amen? It's no time to be following the Lord afar off, Peter. No time to be afraid. No time to be shrinking back. This is the time to be walking with God. God bless you.